Thanks for staying with us. So for several decades, flooding has been a major menace in various parts of the country. And this year in particular, we, were, we received several warnings of flood that was going to ravage about 18 states. I remember reading that story several times. So the issue of our conversation, the, the crux of our conversation today is not so much about the flood, but the response to the flood, the preparedness for the flood. The reaction for the flood is our conversation today because many homes were destroyed. We, we referenced what happened in Kogi, uh, there were quite a few in Kaduna, Kano, Adamawa, Kebi, Gumbi, Sokoto, Boronus, quite a number of states experienced flooding this year. And lots of houses were submerged. I know that in um, Farah, okay. I think Kogi, there were a few homes that were built in preparation for this. So a few governors were able to make some type of arrangement. We don't know how far that arrangement was, had, has gone and um, how many people lives were able to be saved. But there were some states that totally, completely ignored the warnings of um, NIMET when they are telling us particularly that these, uh, the, 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 the rains are coming and the floods were going to be enormous this year. Now, what are your thoughts on the preparedness of the government to protect the people? What are your thoughts on the people's inaction? Because many of them didn't even bother. Mm. To them, like, we flood will come. Where are we going to? I don't, I don't know where else to go to. So many of them were reluctant to move. And how also do you think we could have covered this story better? Hopefully, possibly to inspire uh, next time. So to ensure that next time people actually pay attention to these warnings. Let's hear your thoughts on this. You can call us on 0812 You can also tweet to us at TV Second. Please hashtag your view TV so we can read your tweets. So, as I said, flooding was a problem. We already knew it was coming. Yeah. I mean, we kept telling everybody it's coming. But my worry is government's response to it. Mm. Some governments say, I don't have money to start building apartments. I don't have money to build <laughs> shelters. I don't have that kind of revenue. The revenue from, uh, from FAC has totally reduced. I don't have the kind of money I need to protect. So people should take their lives to their own hands and relocate. If you have a friend, a friend, a cousin in Ogun State, you have an auntie, just move for the time of the flood. I can't take that responsibility. But is that enough, do you think, for a government to totally look, not take enough um, time to prepare for these floods? I think it's totally wrong. I think the government hasn't done enough in protecting the lives and property of its citizens. The job of the government is beyond sitting down and just collecting a location from a location. The job of the government is to see, be proactive. So NIMET has been warning, flood is coming. These states have been earmarked. Something disastrous will happen. People need to move. It's not enough to say we don't have money. You can ask for money. When you need money for political campaigns and all of that, money used to appear from wherever. You can ask for money. I want to build so-so and so in the highlands for the rain so that when the rains come, these people can move there. Even if it's a um, temporal shelter, they can be there. That, is, that shows that government is thinking of its people. The government wasn't really prepared, if you ask me. Secondly, on the part of the citizens, I know it's not easy to just move houses. You have built your life around this area. You are doing, yeah, your children are attending school here. Things are happening around here. So it will not be very easy. But when it comes to life, shouldn't we at least pay attention to that life? In Taraba, they said 50 farmers died as a result of the flood. And most of them were women. People lost their lives. So you know that this would affect me. Right now, my government is not thinking for me. You think for yourself. You find relatives. You just leave that area. They are, they are in every state. No matter how flooded uh, mm. the plan of the state is, they are always high land, uh, yeah. high land that yeah. you can, yeah. you know, camp a bit. Just yeah. stay there till the rains are over, and then you come back and resume your life. So the responsibility is on all of us. It's yeah. not just government. Yeah. Why we are hounding government for not doing enough? The people also need to take their life in their hands. Uh, Lima, your thoughts on this? Because I mean, we all recently witnessed the hurricane in. Um, Florida, I mean, and many homes were destroyed. Mm. So, because somebody will ask the question, why would you build houses where in the flood prone areas? Because many of these people know mm. that these areas that we build houses as flood prone. Because, they, I mean, government will give you the sea of those to build. But the truth is that many of them do know. The same way we see other houses also abroad, they build, you wonder why are they building houses along the coastal lines? Yes, you build houses, but they know that hurricane will come at some point. So, yeah. how could we have prevented this, or how do we better ensure that this doesn't happen again? Yeah, so, 
One of the things we could have done, because we, fortunately, ours is not um, a, a, a nori an hurricane or a monsoon rains that are heavy. It's flood due to the rising level of the yeah. River Niger, especially in local and some of the states along the Chad River where the dams are. Mm -hmm. um, the Cameroon Dam, when it's opened, affects. So most of the states affected are about 20, some 27, and they are because they are along that line. So for us, it is just that higher level. If we had floating houses, for instance, if we ever occurred to us that there's something called floating houses, so that when government is approving, it is that only that kind of house that can be situated along in that, that area. area. Mm. See the houses that we are talking about in Lokoja, they are cement built in permanent structures. Mm -mm. If water come, everybody died. If we ever thought of floating houses, I'm just wondering, you know, you don't have to travel anywhere to know. That's floating houses weaker. You know, not, no. Not necessarily. They're not being, they are, no. they're being held, they are, they're built on pillars, right? Yeah. For those of us who, you know, we like to acquire. For those of us who like to acquire something, imagine that you acquire your TV and once, once the water go up, you're just floating. Wherever you land, you're safe. You don't lose, lose properties and you don't necessarily lose lives. Mm. What the report is saying that I, that I read over, the, uh, over uh, yesterday till this morning is that 300 people died. Mm. Another report on Wikipedia is saying 736 people, people died. died. Wow. Unnecessary lives lost. And then government, government on their part, should always, uh, you know, regulate. Before you give out licenses for building, approvals for any of such buildings, you must consider the disaster that is most likely in that, in that region, area. Mm. in that area. Then number two, government must also look at um, the livelihood of people. So if your business is not fishing, you are not an worried person, for instance, in Lagos, you don't know what it is to live in a riverine area. Why do you just want to go and buy so you can be seeing water? Do you understand? It's, there must be, we can do it along people's occupation. We have the history, we know the areas where people live and they do. This River Niger, if we invest well in it, we will never import fish. True. We are not looking at it. Eh? But, it's just so, sad. I mean, in fairness to um, Kogi State, because I know that two, according to the report that I read, two estates were built for this, especially as a result of the 2012 flooding that happened. Uh, they called them the Flood Enclave and the Wada Enclave. So these enclaves were built specifically for, this time. for times like this. Mm. However, not every state has the capacity to build such. Mm -hmm. So that's why people also must, res must take responsibility to evacuate. Why do you think it's so difficult for people to just please, move? Please, quickly, and, and, because you read out that, can you confirm if NEMA or uh, Kogi State uh, Emergency Rescue Management have helped people to that enclave? Are they utilizing it? I don't, I don't have that report now, but I could be able to find out. But I, I just wanted to say, um, when we talk about Florida, their own flooding is a result of a hurricane. Mm. Our own is every year. They open the dam now. So uh, it, it has to be every year that they yes. open the dam. Mm. Yeah. So before you open the dam, you're not going to prepare. Do, do, aren't you supposed to be responsible mm. enough to say, oh, yeah. Out. Dam is about to open. Oh, yeah. Quit. Everybody yeah, back to the force by force by force. If you don't drum it into, there are some people who don't drum it into their ears. They're not going anywhere. Yeah, true. During COVID, it should be if they didn't drum it into our ears, it should be worse to be ugly like this. Yes. Mm. <laughs> it's true. You have there are things that you have to keep on telling people. Mm -hmm. You have to keep sensitizing people. Mm -hmm. So every year, you know that the dams are going to be open. In fact, if you are, even if that. If you leave, we have 10,000 10, because, like Obiachulu said, it's not easy to pack up your load. And no, I don't know if someone tells me now, pack up your load and leave your house. Where do I start from? Where, hey, where am I going? I don't know. Now, the only house where I get. You know, Waike, I have a friend. Um, she sell, she, she, I went to her house and she told me that um, her house was barely kind of scanty. You know, she didn't really put a lot of things. She didn't have a lot of nice. And I was like, oh, the house is really nice, a fine house, but you didn't put any decoration anywhere because I'm always between states different i'm going to different countries today i'm in england today I'm, you know so she doesn't have she doesn't invest Acquire, in mm -hmm. buying all these nice fixtures mm -hmm. for the house she, even the only house just one tv mm -hmm. and there's a small tv upstairs living so room, she can you easily know? live yeah up and go so because that's her decision there are people where I, i'm living in a flood prone area you already know the area it's not where you start buying a uh, this and mm -hmm. it's somewhere like well this this is our lifestyle same thing with those living in certain areas in in, 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 in abroad mm -hmm. they know that the hurricane or the whirlwind can come they go to the basement they lock up they know even the, the wind will come and blow out the entire house mm -hmm. but they are safe in the basement because they are prepared they know that's the area they're living in they're not living in New York for heaven's sake. So, based on the area you live in, can't you, therefore, I mean, an option is the floating mm -hmm. house, yes. which I don't know about. I love that. But others, there are other ideas, or the government can say, okay, this is our, this, this, this nine local government that was sacked in Kogi, 
these are the areas that will be, will be affected. This is where you can go once the floods are coming. So some states were somewhat prepared. Others weren't. So as much as, yes, government can do better, we, the people too, we have a role to play, don't you think? Yeah, you, yes. yeah, yeah. My, my point is, okay. sorry, yeah, we are Julie. my point is that, yes, I have a responsibility. But if you tell me to pack my load, where am I going? Have you made, um, apart from Kogi, have you made uh, any... Maybe there's a yeah. place where everybody can go. Yeah, shelters. During that time. Yes. You, you, you can't just tell me to park. I should park and, or I should walk into the forest. <laughs> or do ordinary, what? Ordinary I Hollywood. can't just park my like it. Ordinary, park ordinary Hollywood like movies. It. Let's ordinary Hollywood. Let's even go to Hollywood movies. You see them with the fire trucks. Yeah. Announcing, yeah. come out. Yeah. They're going around the communities. Yes. Out. Yes. Everybody back. Yes. With, people are carrying their cars yes. and leaving town because yeah. the yes. flood or the hurricane yeah. is coming. So, yes. so let's, let the government not assume that everybody can think for themselves. That's why you have... We, we don't just That's why you're government. Yes. We don't even just drop from the sky. We have to be born. A parent will give birth to you and then nurture you to get to a certain Charity. stage where you can take decisions for yourself. Now, when you decide to be a leader, you are responsible for taking decisions for the majority of the people who especially cannot take decisions for themselves. Most of these people are very local. Most of them are illiterate. They do not know they are left from their right in terms of, not uh, as an insult, but in terms of um, how do I better protect myself? They are not in that space. They are only thinking about survival. How do we eat? How do we, how do we, how do we? That's where they are. So it's government's responsibility to think for such people. I like the idea she just mentioned. When I was in Maldives, we saw the houses that they built on water. And it's just wood. If government, where there's a will, there's a way. If government is insistent and saying, this is what we need for this area, they will make it. They will make it happen. Mm -hmm. It will even be cheaper to build. We're not using cement this time around. It's just wood. So you find a structure to hold it down, and you build it in those yes, areas. We have we our own. You know, you know, you know, you know the two of you have so. reputation for being engineer, this so. and engineer, Lima. Now you will know. No, she, 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 in that, those environments. Yeah. Start looking at the governors that you're going to be electing going forward. Mm -hmm. Can they sit down and think for the future? Are they future ready? Or are we still going to be doing this every year, every year? We're talking about flood. Next year again on this show, we again. sit down, we talk about flood again, how mm -hmm. many people have died. Let me go on a break. Should, shouldn't we be looking at leaders who are future ready? All right, let, 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 let's go on a break. We're going to come back to um, engineer BC and <laughs> Nima would um, advise us further on how to build quality houses uh, in flood. Stay with us, Brent. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing the flood that happened. Not just so much the flood, but more of people's reaction to the flood. You can call us again on the numbers on your screen, 080-081-270-53687, 091 You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag yourviewTVC so we can read your tweets. I would particularly like to hear from people from up Those north areas. who have been experienced, who have experienced this flooding. Mm -hmm. what, what happened? <coughs> Share your story with us. We'd definitely like to hear from you. Yes, Nima, you're going to say something. So I was going to say that, you know, the... Uh, Maldives example BC was given is not far from us. It's just that it's not as sophisticated mm. as we'd like. So any government, any right-thinking government, rather than look down at a solution, because the people on that Makoko area, they're not daft people. They found a way to survive flood. Yeah. They found a way to exist on water. And that's the solution that we're looking for, for our own flood that is not heavy wind flood. It has, it's just, you know, water levels rising and, you know, dams like that. When we, the water level is not rising and they, are, they have normal ground, they're not staying floating houses No, but they, they, no, they're okay they there. Steps. They know how to live on water. So when water comes, it doesn't bother them. Yeah. When water goes, it's they, fine for them. They yeah. know how to exist there. Yeah. We can improve it. We can improve it. We, it's rather than look down at it and say, ah, I want your mark, okay, and then turn them to emergency case every day. Somebody will come from abroad, come and do video of their documentary. Every kind of poverty, we put it there. We can improve that. We can, you know, make it beautiful. And people can then start to have the ability to, the opportunity to own licenses for properties along the area. It's property. Some might argue, Nima, mm -hmm. let me tell you. Some, some, some might, I'm just going to say that on the side of government. Mm -hmm. Some might argue that the little budget I have, mm -hmm. I want to focus on education, healthcare. Flooding right now, I cannot Nobody's invest. Nobody's making you build more. Don't mistake it, too. Mm -hmm. when, you're, when the department in charge of what can sustain mm -hmm. longer knows what the standard is. All they do is approve for somebody else to go and use their money to invest in it. Simple. Exactly. Nobody asked government to leave education and come mm. and do it. Too. Nobody has said that. Mm. Then I wanted to quickly answer to what YK said that, uh, people, where would they go? If you insist on living in a, in a flood prone area, you should plan. You should know that within this season to this season, rain will come. Yeah. This is the fund I have to go and <clears> hotel myself in a higher ground and come back. 
and don't buy property that you will need to be moving. Yeah. Or you buy speed boats, like okay. uh, mm. <laughs> Femi used to say. Buy, buy something that will help you. Can Invest you, can right. You, you know, you, it's your choice to mm. live there. We can, can do that, but call. we have not really touched the matter. Uh, um, the matter on call. ground is the emergency response to the flood that happened in those areas in Nigeria. Call. Good morning, are you there? It's been holding for a while. I'm here. You're live. Go ahead, sir. All right. Mm. First of all, I want to say that. You, can you hear me? Very clearly, sir. Go ahead, please. Okay. I want to first of all say that we have very responsible documents in Number one, in terms of the way I live, there is only one way that is that is that is that is that is to uh, lift the east down to the north. That road is 10 feet back, and the government, the federal government, have refused to attend to it. If I say terribly bad, I mean terribly bad. That road has been flooded now, and people are using to go to drive on it. They will carry people from the other side. They will have to go down. There is only one bypass that the government of the Blue has done. That is, you are that bypass the fire. That road would have been the situation that we are facing today. That road was not. Now, let me tell you one more thing. The government is so irresponsible. Look at what we are struggling with. This is a deal. It's not just natural. Let me tell you what. If the dam in Cameroon is going to be a reason why we have to have a lot of the government of Nigeria should have discussed with the government of Cameroon. Because if you are going to release the dam at our expense, you need to let us know why we should pay for the damages that we have to pay. We have to pay for by you releasing your dam. We have we also have dam in Nigeria. We have Kenji dam in Nigeria. And let me tell you one more thing: we are facing a situation whereby people have to be using canoe to cross from one side to the other. And today, as we are talking, the government did not provide any flying boat to ease the movement of people crossing from one side to the other. Very soon, people can't go to Abuja from Lokoja. And there's no one single flying boat provided by the government to carry people across when there is flood. Now, they are talking about palliative, and I can bet you that all the palliative things that they are, palliative they are preparing, there are some people in government who are going to eat the money, who are going to, who are going to sell it. Like the way they did it, the other palliative was locked down last time. They are going to be making money So we have a government that is benefiting from our problem. This for this time, the Lokoja has never happened. Why do you think it's not happening? I'm having difficulty hearing you properly, but I think I got a bit of what you said. So there are a few things he raised. He raised the issue of roads. Hmm? Only one road leading out of the, of, 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 of the town, and it's really bad yeah. in itself. Secondly, the government did not provide um, transportation or the accessibility, either with speedboats or mm. something to, to move people, especially when the floods are coming. Yeah. Thirdly, he said the, the Kanji Dam, the, that, the, yes, that having a communication, dam, you, having a communication, yes. Yes. The dam, they open, they should have a conversation with, with the, the other country yes. to ensure that the, the to mitigate the effects mm. of, of, of opening that dam. And also, I think there was one last thing he said, but the point is that there are better ways that we could have handled this. And I think it all goes back to the um, the, the government not taking appropriate steps to ensure Asset, that people you... move to safety mm. before this flood. Because as I said, this, the way it happened this year, it has never happened like this before. So maybe mm. other people, people feel that maybe this flood will just manage it, will just get up to my living room. Mm. After a few days, it, it flows away. away. But this one was particularly different. Mm. And I know Nymet mentioned it, but maybe they didn't ring it enough. They did not they did. ring it. So for me, you, you are mentioning something and you are... You're speaking English. You are highlighting it. We're warning. It's possible, it's possible we are they did in, in the, the communities. No, we, we, we need know. to hear the noise. We need to see the noise. After hearing, we will now see the noise. We need to see, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, flyers, billboards. We need to, it, it needs to be ringing in the hearts of men. So everywhere you go, in the motor parks, in the markets, you will see that there's a noise. There's a bell ringing somewhere. People from social and social move. Oh, this is happening this time and this time. Oh, this is how you sensitize the people. This is how you, you show seriousness that this matter that we are talking about mm -hmm. is a very serious matter and you need to prepare yourself. But when you just write it in the papers, you just mm -hmm. say it once in a while on TV, how many people will really take you serious? How many people will read papers? That's why we say government is local. 
the local government, the people, the yalogers, the babalogers, the chairman, the council, those are the people that are talking to, those are the leaders that are supposed well, to talk to the people. There's also, they there's do? also I don't know what the, they did though, but maybe they did something. We're there's not also sure. the effect of climate change. The rains that we're seeing now is not the normal season. No. Rains just fall in and out of anyhow. season now, anyhow. Yeah. Yes, so we're it's eating, still raining now. Yes, now we're, but you know, before you could calculate, the farmers could predict that, okay, during this season, no, this is where we are farming, this is where, this is when floods come, and you know how to plan. But now, look at what the, the level of loss they suffered in Kebi, for instance. Painful. The rain came and all the plants, all the rice, Destroyed. just like that. You know, so a second. Because I have this cause in you know, know, And the thing is that it's a ripple effect. Yeah. Once the farms are, uh, oh, oh. then there is shortage of food. Well, yes. There will be farming. We'll be Let me take this call from Christopher um, Waike. Let me take this question. Hold it for a minute. Good morning, Christopher. Are you there? Yeah, good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Ah, my experience, it's um, a devastating thing. I went for an event in Edo State um, on Friday, and I went with my family, uh, my family of five. So we got to the, at the edge of Lokoja before the bridge. I was thinking maybe it was something that was just little until I saw flood started coming to us. Uh, just to my daughter, just just a last, last. We'll, we'll get over this. Hmm. And when we saw that um, trailers were just moving and moving, and the, the water was like like almost half of the trailer, hmm. like half hmm. of it. And I, made, and I said, <laughs> uh, and I just told me, I said, just relax, let's hear what will happen. So I think the trailer started um, um, pushing the water to the side, and we just started following the trailer. Oh, until nice. we, well, I think we spent up to like, um, oh, uh, nice. like 30 minutes passing that particular water. When I shared the video on my WhatsApp, People are like, did the guy use a flying boat? Because the way I, I was, I was videoing it, and it was, it was really bad. Mm -hmm. So when we were coming back from uh, from a uh, stage, it was bad. We had to stop. There was no, it was a no going there. It was like I had to walk six kilometers from where we were to go forward to start controlling vehicles. There were trailers, you know, spots or in the middle of the road, about four or five of them. We had to start looking for mechanics. To just to make sure those things go off the road. It was that bad. So I just put this on a Kogi State Governor. So I was talking about this Jamboree of him going to, um, what was it called, to going to the middle of the, of the sea or whatever, with uh, the local boat. It does, it does not help. Let them find a lasting solution to this thing so that the people will not go, in, you know, be having hell in their own state. It's horrible. Thank you, God bless Thank you very much, Christopher. Thank you. It's going to be quick. We're going to come back and continue our review. Stay with us. We'll be back. Thanks for staying with us. Let's take a few tweets on this. Okay, agent you know? of positive change said the issue is moving. People moving into such areas may not be aware of the dangers. The government knows these flood plone areas and has neglected them over the years. Nobody would build in such areas if the government prohibits human habitation there. Yaro says every year flooding is experienced in almost all the states of the country with untold damage to infrastructure, irrespective of the sensitization and public education programs that has been done. It is inescapable that the federal government, and I think he did it. And Tolu, Tolu Adegun mm -hmm. says, Lagos is a coastal city. Mm -hmm. Do we have any refuge areas? Is there any provision for something similar when Leki, oh, when Leki get, gets flooded? Where yes. do people go? So um, Yaro continues, he says, it is inescapable that the federal, state, and local government are also more satisfied with annual ritual of bemoaning and lamenting flood devastation that, than working to prevent it. This is an unfortunate commentary on the nature of government and governance in Nigeria. And until there is a radical and positive change in this attitude and character, Nigerians would have to resign themselves to the reality of annual flooding devastation in spite or perhaps because of the annual flooding, flood warnings by NEMA. And this brings to mind what NEMA did in the Lokoja, particularly Lokoja floods that happened. I know I have relatives in Lokoja and I would hate to imagine that they are floating or they are, they are drowning right in their houses. We saw the pictures. We did not see what you would usually will be judging if it was Lagos. That uh, less, uh, was it? Lagos, Lagos State, uh, Madi Lasema, have not bring boats to come and help people to dry lands. Mm. I would expect Nokoja is a confluent city, constantly facing two rivers. You should by now have your um, water emergency, all of those solutions flying everywhere. This is the time to flaunt it if you have it. So it's sad that government did not have such and they did not flaunt anything. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm even surprised because... That road has been in existence for years and years. When I was going on tour with the band, we, that is the road we passed, that Lokoja road. 
How can you tell me that the road is worse? They have not improved the road. Mm -mm. You know, well, I, don't, I don't know what, how we think in this country. I don't know. Something, you know, there is a cockroach in our brains. I don't know what's wrong with us. I, I'm not even blaming government alone. Just what is wrong with us? Even why has that road not been, I mean... Fixed. Improved on. Improved on. Not even just fixed, but improved on. I, I, to wrap I think, up. Yes. Yeah, I think it's because there's no competition. There's no competition ongoing. So states can just mm, be complacent, just do what we the bare minimum, and then everybody moves on. Mm -hmm. If we have a system in such a, a, a way that states are competing against each other, you will see that everybody will set up. Well, so we have to wrap said, up. Yeah. Someone has said some people might not even know the places where they did. Yes. They, they just moved in mm. yes. last month. They said, Nancy Renis. They just wanted this month. Nancy Renis is in the Dubai land. Nancy Renis is in the Dubai land. Now rent, then they rent the house. No, Nancy Renis. I know that when you, in other countries, when you enter a community, they tell you, oh, there are bears here. You can see. Uh, is it the we'll see signs. foxes? They mm -hmm. tell you that there are foxes here. Mm -hmm. so, so if you are new in the neighborhood, you know that if I see a fox, now I see if he's going to bite mm -hmm. me. Is, you know, or it's so, a friendly there fox. Be, so so there, should be, there should be something to let you know you are entering the flood prone area. So mm -hmm. even when newcomers come into those communities, they, they look, know okay, exactly. this is what happens here. You know? But hey, yeah, but Nigerians will also tell if you that. If you see fox here in Abushmit, <laughs> Andrew says, the, okay, when you think of floods in Nigeria, <laughs> you have to wrap up. has been allocated year in, year out since the mm. 1960s in this flood uh, plains. Where does the money go? That's mm. the main question. Into question. The we have to wrap up. I think, yeah, I I think we're in... this um, is a responsibility across board for both yeah. government and the people. Yeah. Uh, no, government, government will tell you that listen, I have, there are more important things that is doing that is doing us in Nigeria. Mm. Than, mm -hmm. you know, that, I mean, that, that an argument the government can say, oh, please, I have just 100 million naira, and this is what I'm using it for. But mm. either way, as Busy said earlier, we must take our lives seriously. And um, when these floods are coming, especially with the um, information that Naima is giving to us, we should also take precaution. However, Naima is also responsible, should be responsible, of ensuring the protected lives and property. The moment the floods came, make sure you start evacuating people. And if indeed you have equipment, it's a perfect time for you to show that you have Cameroon something. is going to tell you, we are opening our floor, uh, dam next week. Now, mm. it's the same time every year. They know they open. <laughs> they know they change. We have a call from Lokoja, our last call. Good morning. Are you there, sir? Mm -hmm. Good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Uh, my name is Shemi Samuel. Yes. I'm calling from Lokoja. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, I really appreciate you guys. For Thank you. Program. Uh, you see, this uh, issue, 2012, 2013, the flood is very, very high. And I can remember it was PDP period. I'm not talking about politician. I'm not talking about uh, APC and PDP now. But I'm just trying to make an emphasis on something. My father has a house situated in Yakura Amabu. And it's far from where the water is. But there is a little cause that whenever the flood comes, it usually follows through the cause down to our area. And it will overflow the whole place. So, 2013, they built a place for, they, they call the place a local building, they call it a flood house in the uh, area. But, lo and behold, they, they are located to those people that is not even concerned. The water did not even touch their area, the water did not even do anything for them. They are located to those people. As far as I'm Concern as far as I'm talking now, if we can check people there occupying the place, they went the house, they were, their house was not taken over by water. So now this year there's water. I bet you the governor of Kogi State and the entire crew they did not even do anything. Uh, there's a road link uh, Elugu. I offer all those places down to Lokoja that follow, Gala, they, they call it Galaja Road. Water and take over the, the place. There's another road at the back of 200 units that links to Galaja Village. The government is supposed to do something for the people to pass through. About two weeks ago, I called. I have an opportunity to talk to one of their leaders there that this is what they can do for people, so that people will be able to cross, at least, life will be easy, and that one will boost their own needs. But lo and behold, these people, they did not turn up to do anything. What is my concern is this. this water is affecting some people, some area that 
is not, they are not even in the river bank. Such people, they are homeless and they are not even seeing any assistance. And this thing has come from Neymar and all that to help these people, but nothing is done. Nothing has been done for these people, including my father. I'm talking from the experience and from the problem that I'm facing. Now, I don't have anything that I can use to help my father. But at least if government can assist them, it will be okay. very, very okay. All right. but they Thank, Thank you so you. much. I mean, I think I think it's it has just, pretty much wrapped up yeah. the, the situation that many 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 Nigerians are faced with in Lokoja. And it's not just Lokoja, there's so many other, other states. Um, local government areas that um, this has affected. And we and one of the p things people complain is that's been somewhat underreported by the media because you know abroad when this has happened. It's like, it's like the focus. Yeah, yeah, back to back talking every about single it. day. Yeah. They, collapse, they collapse everything else and focus because the lives are coming? involved. When the hurricane is coming, they will tell you, hurricane, yeah, yeah. Mm. it's coming. Yeah. It will be here in two days. They will I, I was in New York and once a countdown. when the hurricane was coming. If, well, if you see the way they were drumming it in our ears, we have went to out make noise day, about we it. We were shaking. So that's, where, so that's where the fourth realm comes in. Mm. Because we also have a role. We have a role, actually, as a, as a, as a media. Mm. Media's job is to ensure that we support the government. So the government has said this. How much, what have we done? Mm. Where we've collapsed. You Usually, when things like this happen, you collapse every other thing. Ones. Nothing happens in the world because we are, we, they, we put, they put lives first. Yeah. Here, lives is secondary. So we focus on other things, politics, or they're doing rally, Before or they're lives. doing this. Other things are more important than these innocent lives that are about to be affected by the flooding. So everybody has a learning curve yeah. in this. We are, we the people, we the media, and even the Nigerian government. So I think it's a learning curve that we, we can all, all the also. Realm. Yes, we have the fourth realm. So we must also take responsibility for. Then we fall in short. Okay, I think that's all we can take on this. When we come back, move on to other topics. Stay with us. We'll be right back.